How's it going everybody? Wes Davies here. Boy have I got an interesting video for you guys today. I'm here in Gaoshan County at a small little town called Chishan. I have filmed here before. This is the old traditional train station built by the Japanese, but that's not what we're doing today. What we're going to be doing is heading deep into the mountains where I've potentially discovered a hidden religious community. So it's something called Mount Zion. And from what I understand it, they are off the grid. They're not connected to Taiwan or the government of Taiwan. I don't believe they pay taxes. They have some kind of exemption from doing all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna head there today and see what it's all about. So I've only ever seen it on Google Maps. I've driven by the sign once, but I just wanna see what does it mean to be a secret religious community living here in the mountains of Taiwan. Let's go find out. So here we are, we're driving right downtown the Chishang Old Street. And you can see examples of some of the ancient, potentially Japanese built buildings down here. A really lovely place, quite touristy, but it's got all of those famous Chishan delicacies. The reason why this town was built in the first place was because the Japanese realized that the bananas grown in this region of Taiwan were particularly tasty. So they actually built the old train station, they built all these old trade offices and buildings, and then they would grow the bananas here, ship them down to Kaohsiung, and then in turn ship them all the way back to Japan. And that's kind of why you'll see almost these old Japanese-like buildings all over the place. So for example, this one here looks like something straight out of Japan. It's actually quite beautiful and something perhaps a little bit rare in Taiwan. So we're just leaving Qishan now. We've been driving for almost two hours and we still have about another hour to go before we reach the Mount Zion community. One thing we did do here in the town is we stopped for lunch. I'll put the address right down below. Very, very traditional Taiwanese lunch. It was bawan and then we had a soup which had pork blood and pork intestines inside and then uh, again a very traditional fried noodles. Everything was very delicious. All three dishes in total cost about 135 NT, which is five or six dollars Canadian. Very, very reasonable for two people to have a, a very nice lunch. So let's just keep driving into those mountains. I can feel the elevation start to go up and let's see what we find. Here we are making another little pit stop today in the mountains and this has kind of been one of my favorite things so far today is it's like I'm traveling through all my old YouTube videos. So we started in Qishan and I filmed videos there and here we are now in Jiaxian. I think I've literally filmed an intro to one of my YouTube videos here in this alley. They call this Cat Alley and it's really pretty. You've got all these colorful umbrellas lining sort of the ceiling here and then all along the sides of the houses you have these murals everywhere so there's always something really interesting to look at here in the mountains. We've got about uh, 30 minutes left on our trip and that will take us right into the heart of Mount Zion. It looks nice. Yeah, thank you. So, you are all Jiaxian? We are not Taiwan. Oh, yeah. Of course. Wow, so it's now 3.30. We've been on the road for four hours. Of course, that includes lunch and stopping a few times to film. But look, we are in the middle of absolute nowhere up here in the mountains, just a couple kilometers from Namasya, which I've filmed at before. But I just had to stop here. Literally nobody around. We're in this beautiful mountain valley here crystal clear water flowing down from the mountains and then I can see just over there just off in the distance that is our final destination that is the holy mount Zion I'm a little nervous I cannot wait to see what what's up there I mean I'm so so curious Welcome to the Holy Mount Zion. So we just came up that hill there and stopped into the visitor center. Everyone's being so, so friendly to us. They gave us some pamphlets, some of which are actually in English. And it kind of explains the history of what they do here. And we're actually standing on what they call 
Mount Zion here. And as you can see, it is in a very, very beautiful part of Taiwan. I would say my first impressions are it has very peaceful vibes to it. People are just going around quietly doing lawn work, you know, cutting down the shrubs, doing some gardening, and it is very, very well kept. So everywhere I look, I see very beautifully pruned trees. You know, just for example, these gorgeous red flowers. I've never seen flowers quite like this before. So we're gonna head up to the main temple area. Where are you going? <laughs> So now we're just going to head up to the main temple area and it looks like a few stairs to climb. Let's go check it out. So this is the main temple here. This is Mount Zion itself. And I believe that this is where they will do all of their worshiping. Very beautiful, Pialyang. At this point, we met Heidi, who, although I don't think she wanted to be filmed too much, was more than happy to talk with us for about 45 minutes about their religion, which is a form of the Apostles of Mount Zion, as well as the history of their community here in Taiwan and some of the persecution that they have suffered over the years, much of it at the hands of the KMT martial law government in the 1970s and 80s. So the president of Taiwan at the time came here. Yeah, the person and, who... And said, wow, said, this place looks amazing. Yeah, he said after he dies, he wants to be buried here. Wow. And so last time we have the legal resident, and then he scared her out. And then, then we fight with the, the government. And then at last, God promised to give this place to us. We don't forget. It's not about having any place. It's about having this yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't hear. We don't surrender. And then, oh, he beat us up, but we don't give up. We say, even our head cut, cut off. off, and our blood be sh shed. We don't yell. We want to fight for this land. Many people into prison. We want to fight. Fight for what? Fight for the truth. Fight for our country. Fight for our people. Yeah, this is it. The, our history of Mang Zayan. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Heidi let me know that after the religious persecution of the people of Mount Zion garnered worldwide attention and protests, the KMT eventually relented and allowed the community to return to the mountain, where they remain to this day. Heidi has lots of stories to share, including how the Prophet led them to this sacred place and how they treat their community as a kind of Noah's Ark, a place where they can survive any apocalypse by remaining self-sufficient. Another thing that struck me was how beautiful and well-kept all of the public worshipping areas are. If you're willing to make this drive into the mountains, this is a must visit for anyone. Keep in mind they do close their gates every day at 5.30pm. So unfortunately, it was time for us to leave. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome to come again. We will. Yeah. Next time we'll come earlier. Okay, okay. And thank you for your introduction. That was very, uh, very helpful and clear. Mm -hmm. So that was a very interesting experience. We got to meet Heidi, as you saw, and I have no idea how I'm going to edit this because she just told us the story of Mount Zion for about 45 minutes. But I think the most important thing was how friendly she was and how willing she was to tell us all about the apostles and, and the history of Zion and the history of this place and just how beautiful and as she says holy that that whole area is so now we have to find a way out of here it closes at 5 30 she did say there's about 200 people living here so they have lots and lots of buildings residences looks like cabins wow look at that little apartment complex and she said it's completely self-sustaining so they grow all of their own food she also mentioned that every day around noon they hold a public lunch where anyone can come and have a meal with them all of the food of course they grow themselves so next time i will definitely leave earlier and try to take part in more activities and even visit the museum they have there about their history which we didn't have time for today so here we are leaving saying goodbye the gate is down it is past 5 30 and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit difficult to film completely while we were inside. I wanted to be respectful, but I think you get the idea that it's a very sacred, holy, and serene place. 
So that's the video, everybody. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.